Good evening and welcome to Holden Evening Prayer at Calvary. A um, little strange just having your pastor here leading this. Today the governor announced a stay at home that we need to uh, hunker down for a couple weeks starting on Friday. So I'm uh, not sure what all that means at this point, but tonight it's just me for Holden Evening Prayer. So, begin with the, the lighting of the, the Christ candle. I'll be speaking some and singing some. So Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing creation's story shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, every dancing star of night, make us shine with gentle justice, let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way, loving spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. May God be with you. And let us sing our thanks to God. It's right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright, for your word and your presence are the light of your, our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. Amen. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. O God, I call to you, come to me now. Oh, hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Keep watch within me, God. Deep in my heart may the light of your love be burning bright. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. All praise to the God of all, creator of life, all praise be to Christ and the Spirit of love. Let my prayer rise up 
like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. The focus tonight and the uh, theme of tonight is shepherding in the home. First, a reading from Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with the promise, so that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So as I said, the theme is shepherding in the home. I'm going to begin with a story told to me by a man who has since gone to be with the Lord and who was a member of one of my congregations years ago. I enjoyed very much telling this story at his funeral. So Doug grew up in a large family in Douglas County. Doug's ancestors had emigrated from Sweden. Doug's father had physical problems that made it painful and hard for him to work, yet he would do his best every day to work and support his family. Doug remembers that each night as the family would all be laying down to bed to go to sleep, Doug's father in his deep strong voice would pray from his bed out loud. He would pray about the day and pray for the family and the neighbors and the congregation and he would always end his prayer with these words, Tuck for en god dag, which uh, is Swedish for thank you for a good day. Doug was amazed, no matter how hard it had been for his father that day, no matter how much pain he had been in, no matter how difficult or how he had suffered that day, he would always end his, par his prayer, Tuck for en god dag, thank you for a good day. What a gift Doug's father gave to his family each evening. They were prayed to sleep, enfolded figuratively in the loving arms of their father and in the loving arms of God. David Anderson in his book, Shepherd of Souls, he tells, also, he tells about a man whose grandmother came to live with his family when he was a small child because her husband had died. So her grandson liked to go sit on the stairs and listen to his grandmother who was sitting in her bedroom. She would read from her Norwegian Bible out loud for several minutes at a time and then she would pause, begin to rock in her chair and pray out loud based on what she had just read. In those prayers, she would include thoughts and intercessions for neighbor farmers, their safety and their economic, physical, and spiritual well-being. She would pray for her new homeland in America and the well-being of the people there. She would pray for her motherland, Norway, and the safety, economic, physical, and spiritual well-being of the people there, too. She would pray for the work of the church around the world. Interspersed between these prayers, she would read more from her Bible, and then she would return to her rocking and her praying. This man doesn't recall if he ever told his grandmother about his eavesdropping. However, 
listening to her intimate relationship with God had a profound effect on the rest of his life. Faith in the home. Home is church too. Maybe now more than ever. This is one of the principles that's proposed by Pastor Anderson in his writings. In this chapter in his book, he emphasizes the importance of faith practices in the home and in our daily lives. For faith to grow and to be impactful in our daily lives, faith needs regular tending, just like anything that is alive needs regular nurturing. In this time right now of social isolation, when pretty much every extra activity is canceled or postponed, and uh, many of us find, or maybe all of us find, that our daily routines are quite different as we're sequestered at home. So individuals and families are not rushing off to this or that event or meeting. And I realize for some, especially teachers, this particular time means a great deal of extra work. Others, though, find themselves at home with family. So this can be an opportunity for conversation and activities together as a family that normally doesn't happen because of our busy lives and going here and there. This Monday evening when Leela and I went for a walk, we had never seen so many couples and families outside walking or doing other activities. So if you find that you have extra time these days, how about trying a new faith practice or picking one up that's been neglected. One faith practice that we did as a family when our children were in grade school and junior high was a, a weekly family night that included a devotional activity. We would rotate who would choose the menu. After the meal, we would do the devotions activity and discussion. And then the rest of the evening, we would spend playing games so it was an evening when we all looked forward to, uh, we would look forward to this each week, and it, it always included a faith component. We used a book called 52 Fun Family Devotions, and I believe if you look for it, it's still available. Another resource for family devotions that's uh, very available online right now, it's called a Vibrant Faith at Home. Org. This website has dozens of topics and activity ideas for all ages and all situations. So there's um, themes and uh, subjects and age groups. And it's a free resource. It's called VibrantFaithAtHome.org. Another faith practice that we had as a family was to read a Bible story and pray with each of our children at bedtime. We used the beginner's Bible, like the Spark Story Bible. And when they were younger, after the prayer, Leela and I often would sing them to sleep while we were in the hall. So we would sing hymns and other songs as they went to sleep. In early grade school, when they would read for them, when they could read for themselves, we had our children read the Bible stories out loud. Then we would each read our own book for a few minutes to ourselves. And it was during these family reading times that I read all the way through the Bible for the very first time. And I used the easiest to understand Bible translation that I could find. I think I used the common English version, but there's many. The Taking Faith Home Sheets that are available on our website and at church, they have a variety of ideas each week on ways to reflect at home on the Sunday lessons and the sermon. As you know, the resources uh, that we have available today are unlimited. The hard part is making the time, taking the time, and creating a habit or routine that's meaningful and works for you. Each one of us will uh, do our faith routine in a different way. 
Now the questions tonight uh, that, uh, uh, that they focus on the ideas of family and the home. So uh, if you're, you can see them right now. Uh, so the first two are, who do you consider as part of your family or part of your home? And how does the term home help you include people who you may not be related to through birth, marriage, adoption, or foster care? Those questions got me thinking about my days at college and at seminary and how the friends that I would gather with at the meals in a sense became my family. We would sit together and talk every evening, maybe sip on a cup of coffee and dessert and, and just talk. And that was my family while well, I was at school. And so school became my home. And then the third question, how does the church at home expand the work of the congregation? Some things to ponder on. Pastor Anderson writes, there exists a long and revered history in the church of nurturing the Christian faith in the home. It goes back to biblical times. That nurturing was emphasized in the Reformation through people like Martin Luther, the Wesley family, and the pietistic tradition. Research from recent decades makes it clear that parents and other caregivers have a unique and a pivotal role to play in the faith formation of children. End quote. I pray for you in the nurture and the growth of your faith, for you individually, and for whoever you consider to be your family and your home. And as a pastor, I would be glad to assist in any way I can. Would welcome the conversation, a phone call, uh, just let me know. So let us pray. Lord God, thank you for all the people who have shepherded, uh, shepherded us in the faith. Fill us with your spirit and help us nurture faith in each other. In Jesus' name, amen. And I think we also have a, a blessing uh, slide that might be there. Share this blessing. May the Lord bless you to know the glorious deeds and might and wonders that God has done for you and for all people. Amen. This time in the service, we had normally take an offering. And so just a reminder, uh, gifts that you would like to give can be given online. Go to the website or mailed to Calvary. Thank you very much for ministry. Uh, it continues to happen even though uh, we're scattered. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the Chosen One of God Most High. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. 
Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and lowly one, humbling the proud of heart. You have cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled the hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promise to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. So let us pray. Dear Lord God, thank you for your loving gift of presence. You are with us no matter what. Your name, Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you. Even in times of separation, you do not forsake us. You do not leave us. Thank you, Lord God. Dear Lord, we pray for all those uh, struggling in any way in the midst of the things going on around the world. Lord, we thank you for health workers, for their service and their heroics in difficult times. We thank you for those that are keeping essential services for food and hospitals, the nurses, the doctors, all those assisting, the truckers on the road, teachers seeking to teach remotely in so many ways. It can be overwhelming, Lord. Help us all to, to rest in your love, to realize we've never done it this way before, that mistakes will be made, that we will learn together, and that as we seek to work together to encourage one another, that we will get through this time together and that uh, you are there every step of the way. So guide us, Lord, through these days and weeks. Help us to reach out to one another using the tools at hand of telephone and other, other things. Guide us through this time, Lord. Lord, you are great and merciful. You are the source and ground of all goodness and life. Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
So, thank you for spending some time with me. And uh, if there's anything you'd like me to know or you want to, uh, you can. Uh, so you can email me at associate pastor uh, at calvarypurham.com. Uh, my phone number, you can text or call 320-491-2422. So let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light to our lives. And may the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. Let us rest in God's care and love in these days. Amen.